tunnel. It just reminded me, I am yet to take this car through a tunnel. Oh, the joys which are yet to unfold. Anyway, welcome back to the GT3. And ironically, as the title of this video would suggest, it's got nothing to do with the GT3 at all. We are swiftly on our way to Stratstone Ferrari Wimslow to find out all about the running costs of the 458 Speciale. I say that because it is finally due for its very first MOT. Now, for those of you guys who live outside of the UK and are wondering what on earth is an MOT, uh, it is a barometer of health. It is a sort of health check for a car that uh, labels it roadworthy, just to make sure all of the components and nuts and bolts are up to scratch, that it's safe on the road, and that's all sorts of things to do with brakes and tires and many variables. Uh, anyway, the Speciale is, of course, more than up to it, uh, but the interesting thing is, since this thing had its last service, uh, which was just before Christmas. We've had four track days. We've taken the car to Dubai, as you do. <laughs> um, and it's, it's been used, like it, it's really been used. And definitely we need some new tires. And I would be surprised if the brake pads aren't affected as well, because we went to Yas Marina for a pretty heavy track session. And that's a very fast circuit. We've had two sessions at Silverstone. That's pretty fast. And all of these things combined um, just add up to wear and tear on the car. So I often get comments and questions in the comment section of my YouTube channel and uh, Instagram, Twitter, etc., as to what are the running costs of supercars. Well, this car currently is only two weeks old, so I can't provide any insight there at all. However, the Speciale, we are now delving firsthand into what it's like to live with and run and I guess ultimately fork out for the running of said supercar. So, without further ado, let's drop a couple of cogs associated with this flat six symphony and head over to Ferrari. <laughs> So it's not every day you get to see your own car up on a ramp and so close like this. One of the things that I've never actually seen working, because I'm normally the guy to be driving it, uh, is the active aero on this car. So for those of you guys who haven't seen the Speciale up close, there's three flaps here that you might not be immediately obvious. You've got this left vein, right vein, and there's actually a flap here, which I, I shall show you. So under the correct wind pressure and wind speed, you'll see that these depress helping to reduce drag, and they operate purely off of wind friction. There's also a plate, see it just there, which depresses and allows airflow to go underneath the car, which you can see working in real time, just there, like that. One thing you can't tell from the camera is just how hard I'm having to press that. You wouldn't believe how much effort I'm having to put in to make that work, which just shows just how much wind resistance must be on there to make this active aero work. What's fascinating about supercars like this is that often a lot of the functionality you can't see. Brake cooling, there's this is brake cooling duct here, channeling air directly behind the brake caliper here to keep things nice and cool. On the topic of brakes, I've been told that brake wear actually isn't too bad. I've done four track days with this car on the same set of tires. Yes, I do need tires, more on that shortly. Uh, but the brake wear, the rear is 19% uh, worn and the front is 14% worn, which for the kind of driving this thing gets, which believe me, isn't soft, uh, I'm actually really happy with. Um, I guess, you know, it's not a, a super lightweight car, but ultimately it's not Grand Tour weight either. So wear on brakes and tires so far hasn't been too bad. For tire wear, you can see here, there's slightly more uh, wear on the inside, which is usual, but generally across the board, the wear is fairly flat, which is exactly what you want to see. Uh, the last track I was on was Silverstone, which is a clockwise circuit. So you can see the difference on the edge of the tires here, where you've got these little lifts on the treads where things have got a bit hot and the weight is transferred to the outside of the car. They've lifted up, whereas on the outside, it's not there because the weight transfer isn't there. And then moving down further towards the rear, there's little details which, again, you wouldn't see unless you've got your car up on a ramp. These are actually the slots for the air intake and cooling for the rear brakes. Again, that connects via a pipe just down there, sending cool air 
to the discs here. One thing I didn't know was this whole tray, all of this here, is carbon fiber, which is crazy. And this is just an example of the details that occur on supercars. I often say it's always the details you don't see on cars like this that sort of help to constitute why it's a supercar. And they really have, look, this whole under tray. Let me just clean off that dirt. All carbon, this whole tray. So lightweight savings everywhere, pretty awesome. Now, rear tires. Again, we were on a clockwise circuit, so you'll see the wear on the inside tire, not too bad, fairly flat. It's a little bit of beading there, but it's not terrible. Compare it with the outside tire, look at the difference. <laughs> I mean, you've just got these massive strips here of melted rubber. These were fairly good tires. As you can see, we've still got the moldings on these, but yeah, I did track these in pretty close succession. These are actually still be road legal, but they are getting fairly shot on the outside. And you never know with the UK, every now and again, you can get this flash storm of water. And the last thing you want to be doing is aquaplaning in your speciali. So I'd rather have all of those veins clear to displace water. And then of course we have the vast carbon diffuser. Uh, these as well, I never actually see these uh, aero flaps working. Basically under certain speeds, these drop down. Maybe I should stick a GoPro here sometime, face it there see if we can capture these flaps moving because they are really cool uh, and thankfully the carbon diffuser is in really good condition I don't forget that I sent this to Dubai at the beginning of the year for PPF by NVN and luckily they PPF all of this so despite the fact that it does get a severe battering it's in really good condition all right we're checking out some hyper extended flappy paddles here so these all just just slot right in yeah, so they're the same thing as the ones that are already on the car. So okay. you don't have to alter anything. We don't have to go for any proxy updates. They are just hyper extended, so full carbon construction, bit wider. Yeah. So you've, you've got more contact for when you're driving. So the idea is that it probably sits similar to there at the top, but the bottom is extended. Yes. So I actually like this slit detail it's, as well. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, it's cool. And at the moment, this is an accessory, so it's okay. not uh, available as a speckable option. Interesting. So you have to you have retrofit to go, it. Exactly, yeah. Um, okay. But they're available uh, 458 uh, all the way up to 488 and 812. This is one of the great things about having a really great dealership in which to come, wow, vibrations, in which to come and chill and check out with. So Stratton have had this awesome sort of kitchen area really. Check this out. Look, they've got this amazing kitchen area installed amongst this whole showroom here. And you can see all the cars and overlook everything that's fabulous and wonderful. So you can come upstairs to the kitchen, grab yourself a drink, admire some of the best cars in the world, and debrief you guys on the whole service thing. So spoke with the guys at the service center. Car's basically perfect. Uh, despite all of the wear and tear it could have incurred, even the track days, obviously tires and brakes, but nothing detrimental. One thing I'm really keen to stress is that with new Ferraris, I think Ferraris from 2011 onwards, you get a seven year service pack, which means you're servicing other than consumables, it's free. You take it in, if there's nothing that needs swapping, you bring it back out again, doesn't cost you anything. Seven years on a Ferrari. I mean, you don't get that with other, bro like I can't think of any, anyone else that does that. You wouldn't even get that with a Mercedes or something. So in actual fact, the running costs of using that car, and look, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that the Speciali gets used. So the actual running costs of using that car pretty hard and regularly, consumables, petrol, tires, Brake pads I haven't had to swap. There is wear there, but they don't recommend them swapping. So yeah, this pit stop isn't all that expensive. And at the same time, I get to come here and enjoy a wonderful drink. Back to the GT3. Okay, back in the GT3 and on the dreary progressive asphalt of the M6 motorway. Anyway, I thought this would be a good time while I'm in a, another average speed zone where I have to maintain 50 mile an hour to talk to you. So, uh, yeah, that was just a quick insight really into, I guess, the running costs of that car. Obviously, fuel is a different variable entirely. Uh, tires very much dependent on how you drive it, but the main thing is the 
the general maintenance, the service and the warranty better than anything else. Better than anything. It's so, so good. Anyway, you've heard about that. Now we are en route to rendezvous with something special that has been temporarily absent from the channel for the last few weeks. Yes, the Aston Martin Vantage is coming back today. The reason being, uh, while I've been away traveling and filming on various different plateaus of the continent, uh, there has been updates made to the Vantage, uh, which will make it a little bit more interesting, uh, certainly on the inside. So, as a bit of history and context, that car was actually Aston Martin's Geneva show car. And what that meant was it was emblazoned with lots of fancy options and carbon and various bits and bobs that, funnily enough, I weren't on it when I collected the car. And Aston said, look, it's a very early car. Uh, there's some bits on it which weren't there for Geneva, but if you want to pop it back, we'll upgrade them for you. So I shall share with you very shortly what those upgrades were. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Ciao.